Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to CData Arc. This video shows how to integrate your data flows with your back-end systems, whether those are databases or enterprise applications like Salesforce and QuickBooks. This is the second video of a three-part series covering end-to-end -end EDI integration. In the last video, I configured an AS2 connection. Now we'll integrate with the back-end, and the third video will tie those two together with EDI translation and mapping. So let's get started. CData Arc includes dedicated connectors for each backend system that you can integrate with. We'll use SQL Server here as our example backend, but the same principles would apply to other systems as well. Here in the Flows page, we can see the AS2 connector from the previous video. Now I'll add a SQL Server connector to the flow by dragging it into the canvas. I won't connect the AS2 connector to the SQL Server connector just yet, because there are some intermediary steps that will be covered in the next video. The first thing we need to do with the SQL Server connector is establish a connection to our SQL Server instance. We can see from this connection dropdown that there's already a connection configured in Arc, but let's create a new one just to see the process. First, I'll give this new connection configuration a simple name so that I can later reuse it within Arc if I want to. Now it's time to set some simple connection parameters. First, the host, which in this case is my local machine, localhost, and my instance happens to be running on a non-standard port, so I'll need to include that port value as well but normally that port number would not be necessary. Next, the database specifies the data set within my SQL Server instance that I actually want to connect to. And finally, the user and the password fields combine to perform standard SQL Server authentication, so I'll just type in the appropriate values here. All right, the test connection button ensures that I can successfully talk to my SQL Server instance and this connection configuration process is done. The next step here is to choose an action for this connector. The action determines how the connector will interact with SQL Server, whether that's inserting data, pulling data, triggering a stored procedure, and so on. In this case, I want to insert the data I'm receiving over AS2, so I'll set the action to upsert, which is the combination of update and insert. The last step here is to choose the table, or in this case tables, within SQL Server that are relevant to the current data flow. If I hit the Add Table button, Arc will read the available tables from SQL Server and list them here. In this example, let's imagine we're receiving EDI purchase orders over AS2, and so we want to insert these into our orders table in SQL Server. Well, I'll just select orders from the list. The SQL Server connector populates with the columns within our orders table, and we'll just leave them all checked here to show that we want to insert into all of them. Importantly though, our purchase orders also include line items, and we want to insert the line item data at the same time as the order data. So I'll need to add another table here, and then I'll select the order items table, and Arc will add this as a child table to the parent orders table. Under the hood, Arc understands the foreign key relationship between orders and order items, so it can create purchase orders with the associated line items within SQL Server. And that's all the configuration that we need for SQL Server. In order to test this setup, I'll first show you a sample input file that the connector can process. This file is an XML representation of our EDI purchase order that we're receiving over AS2. Now, converting the AS2 data into this format will be the task for the next and last video in this series. For now, we'll simply take this input file and manually upload it in the input tab of the SQL Server connector to show that it's working. Once I've chosen and uploaded this file, I can hit the Send button to manually initiate this upsert. From the success message, we see that this SQL Server integration is working, so that covers what we're looking to accomplish in this video. Very quickly, if we hop over to the Automation tab, we can see that Send Automation is enabled meaning that when data arrives at this connector in the flow, it will automatically be upserted into SQL Server just like I manually did with the send button. So that sets the stage for the last video in this series, where we build out the intermediary steps in this flow canvas that translate our inbound EDI data into the XML format that I just showed you a few moments ago. So that covers the basics of backend integration using SQL Server as an example. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video in this series, and as always, you can find more resources at arc.cdata.com.